Asheville Music Tools Analogger ACV-1. Very often you will see chorus pedals take a very guitar player focused approach to designing a circuit, uh, keeping things simple. Not to, not, to, not to talk down to us guitar players or anything, but we tend to like simple, very uh, user-friendly, very idiot-proof effects. Things that will only sound good, things that will kind of tell you exactly where you're supposed to go with the controls and everything. Sometimes it's nice to step out of that and to really take a very like sound designy approach to a circuit. And that is where the ACV1 comes into play here. This is a very precisely engineered, like I said, arguably over-engineered for a chorus pedal piece of gear right here. Uh, and I think that's really fun. Rather than your kind of standard rate depth mix controls and that kind of being it, Asheville Music Tools has elected instead to kind of lay this out more like you would see in a modular synth where you have a kind of effect blocks that play together and interact in very interesting ways. The ACV-1 is a bucket brigade analog chorus divided up into three distinct sections. You have a delay block, an LFO block, and an amp block. That amp block is going to be your mix and your tone, pretty straightforward. Uh, the delay block is going to be kind of what generates that chorus sound kind of at its mechanical level. That's going to be your, your incredibly short delay time that creates that chorusing effect. And that LFO block is of course going to be the rate and depth of the modulation on that delay line that gives you that chorusing or vibrato sound. But that delay block being divided up into time and feedback actually does open this thing up into a lot of interesting non-chorus applications. Because you have control over that time separate from your rate and your depth on the LFO itself, um, you can get into some interesting comb filtering, incredibly short delay times. I think it's between three and 60 milliseconds on this thing. Uh, you can stretch that out a little bit farther with uh, control voltages. Directly beneath that though, you also have a phase inversion switch, which allows you to flip phase on the feedback of that delay, which will kind of help you carve out frequencies and create a whole other swath of chorus sounds beyond just traditional chorusing. Uh, when that time knob is really short, you will get more dramatic results from that phase inversion. But this is also where you get into some really interesting things on this thing. Because you have access to that time and that feedback, as well as your LFO and your mix and your tone control, you can actually take this thing from traditional, very 80s sounding analog chorus tones and push it into other areas beyond just vibrato. You can get kind of like Leslie style rotary sounds out of it. You can get a slapback delay out of this thing. You can almost get some almost faux analog reverb sounds out of this, which is really interesting. So we're going to jump into some sound samples here in a second, and we're going to really explore kind of both the basic functionality of these knobs, as well as kind of the more interesting non-traditional approaches you can take with this flexible of a chorus pedal. All right, before we get into our sound samples, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain. I am playing my Bunting Melody Queen T with a gold foil in the neck and a Tele pickup in the bridge into the Bondi FX 2026 compressor, the Benson preamp, the Analogger ACV-1, and the Walrus Audio Eons Fuzz uh, coming after the chorus because I like that kind of messy chaos for this. Uh, from there we go into the Strymon Timeline and the Strymon Big Sky in stereo, out to the Universal Audio Ruby and Dream also in stereo. Right now we're only running the compressor and a small plate reverb on the Big Sky. Uh, if we bring anything else in, we'll kind of make a note of it as we go along. Uh, yeah, let's let's give a listen to our dry tone. And this is the Analogger ACV-1. Everything is set to noon except for the feedback. Phase is in the up position, which is the in phase position, and we are in the uh, triangle wave right now. Uh, this is basically how the manual describes kind of like get to know your ACV1, uh, kind of like standard classic chorus. <laughs> Yes, that is a very classic chorus sound.
What I actually want to do here is start really, really simple. Let's take a look at the mix and the tone while we're in that kind of classic sound. And then we will move up to our time and feedback block. And then we'll move over to the LFO block. We are now, of course, fully dry. basically in vibrato mode. But this is a good time to take a look at those three waveforms too, because, uh, you know, we're in classic vibrato. Square wave. And sine wave. Okay, and let's go ahead and give that tone control a quick listen. We can get kind of really dark, murky stuff. start to kind of bring a lot of like shimmer out of that. And of course, the tone control only affects the uh, affected signal, not your dry, which actually can be really, really useful in kind of taming down, kind of a, like bringing in like a darker chorus sound with your dry guitar. Okay, let's go ahead and move on up to that delay block. Okay, so we have reset our amp block back to uh, noon and noon. Our LFO is completely off. Let's go ahead and just take a look at the time and feedback controls up in that delay block. Uh, that time control uh, in a lot of traditional choruses is going to be called your lag. And that is essentially the, um, the kind of delay time set in the Bucket Brigade chip. Uh, that is then modulated uh, further by the LFO, which is basically how you get chorus sounds. Um, that delay time is, like I said, between a roughly 3 and 60 milliseconds, and you can basically get anywhere from really close comb filtering uh, all the way out to some slapback style sounds. Um, and you will hear kind of the value of that phase inversion while we take a look at those settings. So we'll play with that one as we play with this section. <laughs> I mean, you can hear it right away. That's just changing that delay time. I mean, you hear that immediately, that, that phase inversion really...
And that right there is a great example of kind of what chorus is at its very most basic. Just by moving that delay time in such a short delay range, uh, you immediately get that chorusing sound. Like I could play, this is not going to sound good, but I'm just going to strum the guitar open and play with that time control really quick, just so you can kind of hear essentially what real manual chorusing looks like. There you go, that's chorus. Like I said, and we've now entered kind of like rough slap back territory. kind of like just barely oscillate when you when you max out that feedback set back to kind of that standard startup 80s chorus sound, but you're not hearing it because it's time to look at that LFO. Like I said, uh, chorus at its core is essentially a very short delay time being modulated, the, the delay time itself being modulated by a low frequency oscillator, an LFO. And, uh, and that is what causes that chorusing sound. It's that small change in pitch that comes with changing the delay time. So let's go ahead and start bringing in that LFO to kind of hear how severe or how subtle or how wacky you can get this one, uh, as well as how that impacts the three different waveforms. <laughs> So it gets really, really quick, which is nice. And uh, that, that actually does have an application that I kind of really like. We'll get to it in just a second. And now we're getting into like laser beam sounds. Or if you want to create something completely nonsensical. Okay, but like I said, there is some value in some of those wackier sounds. And for me, that value is square wave. that so much but there's just something about that that I find very amusing I like I like the rhythmic component to kind of like play along with does anybody need 
appreciate that? Maybe not, but but we haven't, and I, and I, and I like that. <laughs> Okay, so let's start digging into some of the factory presets. Um, I think that this is actually incredibly useful. Typically, I won't consult the manual for like specific sounds in these videos, but I think they did a very good job of highlighting some of the really unique uses in there. And so we're just gonna go with that because I think it's super valuable. So for instance, we have like a pretty standard subtle chorus right here. <laughs> By just bringing up that feedback, you can push yourself into flanger territory. different flavor of flange just by hitting that uh, that polarity uh, inversion I really like that kind of like low focus Now you get like some real like lush flanging. Here we've brought up our time to like not quite a discernible amount of delay, but kind of right on that cusp. And with a quick but more shallow LFO and a full wet mix, we're able to hit kind of a, a vibrato sound that edges more on the Leslie side of things, which is really cool. And I think this is my favorite kind of quote unquote vibrato sound in this thing. <laughs> that put a little bit of like lo-fi energy in that oh let's actually do that let's let's spin up a quick delay using the lo-fi mode on the timeline Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So for context... That is a great sound. Okay, again, and we are back at kind of like a basic chorus sound. But because that time control gives you so much range, like that, that ability to lag your delay is so effective. By the way, we've turned off all of our reverb and we can now add some ambience back in just with the ACV. You almost get you get kind of like a faux room sound out of it, which is really cool. And you can start to increase that feedback again until you start getting into, like I said, almost kind of like a room sound, uh, and you can kind of add some decay with that. And by increasing that feedback control, 